Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners and what a night we've got coming our way this Saturday night at Albion Park. It's Q-Bread Race Night. All 10 races for Q-Bread runners. So you won't see those interstate runners or New Zealand breads. All about the Q-Bread action here on Saturday night. Two Group 1 features and four listed features. It's going to be a tremendous night of action. And don't forget there's extended coverage this weekend with this Albion Park meeting through Sky Racing Active and also with the tab they've, big, uh, they've got a big quaddy jackpot so a lot to look forward to with this meeting coming our way. In this edition of Weekend Winners I plan on catching up with Kylie Rasmussen and Brendan Barnes. Always great to chat with Kylie Rasmussen and Kylie set to play a big hand at the big Q-Bread race night this Saturday night. She's in the hot seat with us now. Kylie, appreciate the time. Yeah, no worries at all, Chris. We start with race one on Saturday night. This is the listed triad final for the four-year-old mares. Frost and Ice is your drive. You know this mare well. She draws the inside of the second row, starts all important. If the one can hold up, gives you a great chance. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I would love to have drawn one or two because she, she's a really good front runner. Um, but seeing how we didn't draw there, where we have drawn is terrific. So, yeah, I think she gets a good chance from there. She's had four runs back following a little freshen up. How have you assessed those runs? Yeah, she's a funny mare. Um, she gets herself very nervous before races, so race one is absolutely perfect for her. She's not going to have to be here a long time or standing around all night. So, um, yeah, I think um, no, she's come back well and she'll be really well for Saturday night. OK, so with some normal luck, she can certainly feature in the top three. Absolutely, I yeah. think so. Um, overall, I think it's a very even field. Um, yeah, so with a bit of luck, yeah, she'll be right. OK, well, that's Frost and Ice in race number one. We move across to race four. Another feature here. This is the listed Breeders' Class for the two-year-old fillies, and you're on the hot favourite in Cat King Cole. Three wins from four starts. She looks super exciting. Yeah, I really like this filly, Chris. Um, you know, she hasn't been tested at all to date. Um, but in saying that, um, I'm very confident with her. She's, she's a really lovely filly, and I think um, when she needs to step up, she will. Yeah. For sheer speed, how quick is she? She's very quick. Um, she's really got a brilliant up, up change of speed. Um, yeah, I like this filly. OK, she was an easy winner last time out of the gold bullion, and, and she put that field away so effortlessly. Just the way she raced up the home straight looks so good. She's got barrier one here, so she's obviously the horse to beat. So she's got this race and the try Is there anything else that you're looking at this season? Um, no other features as such. Um, probably she'll need a couple of runs leading into the triad, um, so I'd have to have a look what's programmed um, for her in those weeks before that, but um, really the triad's the main other one for her. Okay, I'm tipping there's going to be a big cheer squad on hand on Saturday <laughs> night. There always is with this filly, and they'll be loud and proud. Oh, they're terrific owners. They love their racing, and yeah, especially when they get a nice one as well. Yeah, They'd be great. really good. Yeah. Great to see. Race number five, the Group 1 Colts and Geldings triad final. Dr. Feelgood, he brings winning form into this race. This is a step up, no doubt, but he's an improver. You know what, Chris, I really like this little horse. I liked him when we broke him in. He, he has got a good turn of foot. I do think, but from that barrier, it's probably a little bit awkward for him. Um, it's just a bit of a nothing draw. But, um, no, I do like this little horse. What would have been a good draw for him? Well, I would have liked to have been, like, one, one the second line, two, two the second line, anywhere that he's sort of in a place already. Um, with the big fields, it makes it a bit hard. So you'd like to swap him in the stable? Got <laughs> well, I would. I don't know if Matthew would. <laughs> yeah. uh, Manila Playboy, is he clearly the horse to beat? I think from the draw he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. All right, but he can definitely run top four, Dr Phil? Uh, if we get the right run, most definitely. All right. Uh, race six, the Breeders' Classic for the Colts and Geldings. You've picked up the drive on Teddy Disco. One start, one victory. What do you know about this guy? I don't know anything about him other than... Uh, watching the first race that he won at Redcliffe. Um, I'd have to talk to Sean about him, but um, yeah, I don't know much. Okay, this is a good field as well, so it's a good test. It's obviously harder than what he beat at Redcliffe first up. Uh, he's got some really talented rivals here, but barrier one, it's got to give him some sort of hope. Well, it puts him in a position, doesn't it? So he's not sort of 
with a lot of others in front of him. So hopefully he can be close enough up there on the fence and just get a nice run. Okay, well that's Teddy Disco there. And then we go across to the three-year-old consolation for the triad, race eight, the filly, Vanish Hanover. Uh, a last start winner. How important was that just as far as confidence is concerned? Probably not so much for her as for me. Um, I really was just shaking my head. Um, I just didn't know where she was at. Well, we were doing wrong. Um, was I driving her wrong? But um, yeah, I think probably from that draught uh, Saturday night makes it a little bit difficult. But if we can get her up there somewhere, she'll be right. Okay, she won the Breeders' Classic last season as a rookie. What about the distance? Uh, many of these fillies are unknown at the 2,138 metres. Do you think your filly can run it? I think with the right run, she'll follow the speed. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I probably still don't know a great deal about her. And I'd have to look back through her form down south, see if she ran any distance. But um, I think she'd be fine following, yeah. She wouldn't want to do too much work. Okay. I'm tipping I don't have to be Einstein to work out what your <laughs> most important drive is on Saturday night. No, you don't have to be at all. We'll take the tip with the race four, number one, Cat King Cole. You've, you and Darren have produced some really nice horses, in particular some fillies, but she's sort of, uh, you know, getting herself in that conversation now? I think she definitely is. Um, like I said, I have, she's never really been tested just to know how strong she is, but from the feel I get from her, She's very nice, yeah. Excellent. Really appreciate the time, Kylie. We'll see you trackside. OK, thanks, Chris. Great night of racing coming up on Saturday night, Q-bred race night. Brendan Barnes is going to be right in the thick of things as far as the action is concerned, and he joins us for this week's edition of Weekend Winners. Brendan, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. We start with race two, Rocks or Diamonds, drawn two off the second row. This is the four-year-old tri uh, triad final. This guy's returned in really good form, plays for his last four. Yeah, and the, the draw is sort of pretty good for him there. So then uh, barrier nine, nice and close, but um, there's some pretty smart ones in it. But if they sort of something happens to happen a bit silly early, he's definitely showing a lot more speed this time in and, and hopefully he can go well. So he does feel like he's come back in, in much better order this campaign, bigger, stronger, faster? I think so, and he just seems to be a bit more sort of alert too. He's a pretty, pretty dopey big fella and he seems to just be taking it all in a bit better and he's concentrating a little bit more and, and definitely racing better. A lot of his good form is at the mile. Can he stretch it out to the 2,138 metres? I think with a sit, it sort of it doesn't really matter. He's um, sort of a pretty docile sort of a horse. He doesn't sort of conserve too much energy, and um, yeah, he'll be, he should be fine. Main dangers, are we looking at the Turpin McMullen team off the front row? Will the Wizard Blacks a dance, or do you respect those off the second row like Bombardier, Jew, John Glen Eagle, Warrior? There's plenty of nice horses in it. Obviously, sort of Pete and Chantel's runners with the, the favourable draws, we both know that they're uh, very classy horses and, and sort of, yeah, they'll, they'll give it a, a big shake for sure. All right, well, that's Rocks or Diamonds, race two. Race three, this is the three-year-old Colton Gilding's consolation. Courageous Sam, he's got the same draw as Rocks or Diamonds, two off the second row. How's he going this campaign, four runs back? Yeah, he's a bit of a slow learner, this fella. He sort of, last start, we, we just experimented and tried to use him early and, and that didn't work. And since then, he's been freshened a little bit and, and um, he sort of races a bit better off the speed, but as I said, he's a, he's a bit dopey and he's sort of taken a while to realise what he's doing. So is he good enough to take this race on Saturday night? I think he does have a fair share of ability, but he's just got to click. Sort of when, he, when he'll click and sort of realise what he's there to do, we're not sure, but he's definitely got the ability there, it's just a matter of when. He's sweet to prove in Group 1 winner. Does he loom as the horse to beat, or is there a few others there that you're keeping the eye on? Yeah, probably that's the one, but... Um, all these races here on Saturday night, any, any horse could pretty well bob up in any of them. OK, we move across to race five, and this is the main one, the Group 1 triad final for the Colts and Geldings. Again, you've got gate nine, chain link. This guy's been a great improver. Each and every time he goes out, he always puts in. Unplaced last time out, but the run was still OK. Yeah, his run really was really good last week. We, uh, last start, we um, sort of were caught wide early and sort of had to go back and, and ended up taking some shortcuts and hit the line pretty well as good as anything. Obviously, um, a front row draw for him would have been really nice because he's got great gate speed and, and could have put himself into a good earned position. But barrier nine's not the greatest and he's, he's sort of pretty versatile. We can sort of put him into it if it looks like we need to and, and sort of look, uh, look for a trip behind one of the better ones or we can just sort of wait and see. Has his improvement caught you and Jack uh, by surprise, the way he's come on this campaign? We, um, we sort of had a pretty decent opinion of him after, uh, I think it was his second trial for us, he, he led and, and did it really well, sort of 
ran um, to the line with a, an open class horse and, and did it really well. So I've had sort of pretty high hopes for him and it probably took him a little bit longer to, to win his first race for us than we thought it would, but it definitely hasn't been a surprise. Manila Playboy is the odds on a favourite for this feature. Is he clearly the horse to beat? From the draw, he just looks like he could get ahead of his main rivals and um, no doubt it'll be a genuinely run race and it'll be an interesting one for sure. Okay, race six, this is another feature, the listed breeders classic for the two-year-old Colts and Geldings. Danger zone, one start, one victory, and that was a feature taking out the changeover classic. We haven't seen him since publicly, but he's had a number of trials. Is he right up to the mark for Saturday night? Yeah, his trial uh, last Friday was really good, sort of pretty well as good as he's been, and um, obviously we would have liked to have a race going into it, but the race he was uh, nominated for last Saturday night didn't go ahead, but uh, he had a good hit out at that trial last Friday, and he, sh he should be full steam ahead ready for Saturday. So that hasn't been by design, the fact that he hasn't started since the changeover classic, there just hasn't been opportunities available for him? Yeah, well we had, he had a couple easy weeks after that, that win in the changeover and then he had, had the first couple of trials and he just didn't feel 100% sharp yet, not wound up and, and the plan was to sort of look for that race uh, last Saturday, sort of give him a week in between runs and, and when that didn't eventuate, obviously with him not being APG, so a lot of them other horses were through them APG series and there wasn't a lot for them sort of one win horses but um, yeah that trial last week was really good and, and gave us a bit of confidence. Interestingly with those trials, uh, three trials since that victory and the times have got quicker each and every time so he's obviously pretty close to the mark like you've outlined. Yeah he was, he was very sharp last week, he'd sort of just been doping along a bit and he, he's a big fella for a two year old, he looks more like a three year old but um, Last, last week he was very sharp and his trial got to the line well. This is a good field as well. I am Sparta, likes the lead and he draws ideally gate two. Misty Creek, he's looked good so far. Arnold Street keeps improving. Class to the max, a last start feature race winner. It's a good test. Yeah, it is for sure. And, and I'm sure everyone will sort of um, think they're a pretty good hope and there's, some, there's probably a few good hopes in it, but I wouldn't trade my fella for any of them. Where do you want to be going into that first turn? It's probably sort of one of those we probably won't really make a plan with him, we'll just sort of drive him where he feels, if he wants to run the gate he'll run the gate, if not we'll sort of just look to tuck him in, but I think he's pretty versatile and I think he does feel like he's going to have good gate speed the day we do, do decide to push the button, but we'll sort of just probably let him sort of tell me what to do and, and just drive the race as it is in front of us. Alright, race number seven, this is the Group 1 triad final for the three-year-old fillies. Sweet Appeal is your drive here, drawn in gate three. She may even start from gate two if the emergency doesn't secure a start. Following the barrier draw, this race has really opened up in many ways. Yeah, definitely. The two sort of main dangers drawn out wide on the back row. But, um, you know, she's an improving filly and um, one day the penny will drop with her and she'll be a very nice race mare. But um, she's got good gate speed and she's got good speed, so she should be able to get herself into a, a good, good spot. And I think she's a really good top five chance. Okay, how much gate speed does she have? Uh, kisses for misses immediately on your outside. She can run the gate. She's likely to go forward. Can you match her early? Well, I think so. The last time um, we sort of let her go forward on the 2100 metre start, she sort of crossed uh, Cheese and Kisses quite easily. And I think the week prior to that, Cheese and Kisses led it uh, 26, uh, 26 opening quarter over the mile. So I think she's got plenty of speed. And I haven't really asked her to come out of the gate too much. Every time she's come out, she sort of hasn't been under the whip. It's just she's come out under her own steam. Many of these fillies are untried at the 2138 metres, how do you think your filly's going to handle it? Yeah, she's had a couple starts in preparation for this just to see how she would handle it and, and she sort of seems to have taken it all well. Alright, race number eight, the three year old fillies consolation, Lily's your drive here, she looks like she's ready to win, she's been placed at a pass three, can she take this on Saturday night? Yeah, it's definitely not, not sort of the hardest races, she's been taken on, on Jasper and Auntie Bella and, and not been far away and the the gate's kind of her again and, and she's versatile, she can get forward, she can come off the speed and her manners just really get her a long way too. Can she lead and win this race? Wouldn't surprise me. Okay, so you rate her chances highly? I do, yeah. Obviously, I don't think she's had a 2100 metre start before, but I don't think it'll phase her. Okay, it's a good book of drives, there's several key runners there, which one stands out for you? Obviously, Danger Zone is the one we're sort of looking forward to the most, I'd say. Okay, race six, number five, Danger Zone. No doubt he'll be eyeing off the, uh, the triad during the, uh, the tab constellations. Hopefully everything going well, that's the plan. Excellent. Brendan, really appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. Again, a big thanks to both Kylie Rasmussen and Brendan Barnes for their time and insight, and we wish them the best of luck as they chase Group 1 glory this weekend. Looking for a best bet? It's a fairly tough night. There's a few obvious ones where there's going to be some short-priced favourites, but I'm going to 
hold firm and wait for the last race. Race 10, number one in the Phillies' consolation. This is for the Breeders' Classic. Roses are sweet. Facing the starter for the first time, part of a good stable. Recent trial was good, but she draws perfectly here, and this is a, uh, this is a winnable race. So I think be patient, wait for the last. Race 10, number one, Roses are sweet. That's the best bet. If you are gambling this weekend, don't chase your losses. Walk away. We'll see you trackside here at Albion Park.